So there are two kinds of people in this world. The first kind who are always motivated to do something. They're always looking for reason so that they can start something, they can improve their craft. And on the other hand, we have people who are always looking for reason not to do something. They're always looking for a reason so that they don't have to start something, so that they don't have to finish something. So why I'm telling you this? See, I get these emails almost every day where people ask me, should I need to study coding now because AI is overtaking everything? AI will take my job. Why should I bother study for four years, do my bachelor's or my master's, or do my boot camp or self-study, right? Why should I do that? I mean, AI is going to do my job. So is there a reason I should study so hard to get a job? In many cases, AI can do better. Why should I bother? And this has become a kind of existential crisis for me. So what should you do? See, in this video, I'll try to explain a few things. And I think after the end of this video, you'll feel more relaxed. So I'll show some points that why AI might not take a job, but on contrary, it will might create more jobs or it will make your job easy. So if you want to get all that knowledge, please watch till the end because there are many things I want to cover in very short period of time. So what should we do in this AI driven job market? So as I explained, there are two kinds of people, right? People who want to do something and people who want to make excuse. So if you're kind of people who wants to make excuses, who don't want to do the hard work, and who wants to think that AI will take my job, so why bother doing anything? I think you should quit that mindset as soon as you can. See, let's say there are 100 people who, are, who wants to become a software developer. I'm just assuming a number. Out of 100, maybe 30 people who are confused. Like, should I do that? Should I not do that? And I think if they quit early on, that will make it easy for rest 70 to get that job. So this is a kind of race. If 30 people wants to quit, I mean, good for you if you want to study hard those 30 people will be out of the race. So if you want to become a part of that 30, I think you can just stop watching this video. You can just quit and do plumbing, electrician, you can do anything you want to do, right? You don't have to do web development or software development, any of those stuff, right? But if you're part of that 70 who wants to improve their craft, who wants to improve their coding skills, I think AI will help you to learn those skills faster. So imagine a time before Google or even Stack Overflow. Even back then we had people who were doing really well in the software development journey. They were learning new things, they were making new products. And when Google and Stack Overflow came, like people like me took advantage of that. And nowadays you have AI, you have ChatGPT, you have Cloud, you have all these technologies where you can put your question and it will give you answer. And if and say you don't get the answer, you can say explain like M5. So it will explain you like you're five years old and it will break down in chunks so that you can understand it better. See, you need to understand this main point. Currently, AI writes 80% better code than most of software developers. I mean, 80%, AI can beat 80% of current software developers in making a code easier to read, optimized, and everything. I mean, it can write test cases, it will give you edge cases, everything. So why should you bother to learn anything? This is the question like I, I get asked. Like, should I, if AI writes so effectively, what is the need of a software developer, a software engineer? So software development is not just about writing code. It's about planning, strategy, suggestions, asking questions, giving suggestions, and all sort of different things you need to do to create a software. See, when you give AI a small problem, it will give you a really good code. But if you ask AI to create, let's say, a Super Mario Brother game, it won't give you code. Like, it can't because there are too many constraints, too many variables that requires to create a game. So you need people who have those skills. On top of that, you can put AI. So those people can ask AI how to make things, how to develop specific part of that game so that you have an end product. Maybe previously it was checking 100 days. Maybe you have that product ready in 70 days, 80 days. So you will save time. Company save time. Customer save time because they'll get that game sooner rather than later. So everyone gets benefit if we have a system where we can ask question and get response and we can use that as a feedback mechanism rather than just thinking that this is the correct and only answer we can think of it as a place where you can get feedback so this is what ai is really good at it is really excellent in giving you feedbacks as a learner you can get feedback on your code and as an executioner as a coder again you can get feedback okay how is this code better than this code or can you optimize this code or can you give me suggestion how can i make it better and can you write test cases i mean <laughs> i don't like writing test cases so i usually ask yeah okay can you write test case for that it give me five or ten test cases and i'm done i don't 
I mean, I can review it, send a PR. So this is where like you can leverage AI to ship your product faster. So one of the things I usually talk about on this platform is creating SaaS products, right? Rather than making portfolio websites, you should create SaaS products where you take a feature from a website and you implement only that feature and you sell that as a service or as a product. That's it. This is what a SaaS product is. So with the AI, you can deliver. See, if you're good at front end, let's say, and you're, and you're not really good at back end, you can take help of AI to, let's say, generate your schema, generate your endpoints, and even ask basic questions, so how can you integrate those two technologies? So there are different ways you can use AI to ship your code faster. Rather than thinking that AI will take my job, why don't you build something with it? Why don't you give, why don't you create a product or service around your skill as well as AI and just give it to customers. I mean, that's the thing AI will enable. Like lots of people nowadays are creating those products. And I'm not just talking about making money. See, think of AI as a senior developer or principal level engineer who is really good at certain tasks. So you can take help. You can ask questions. You can ask queries. It will, till some point, will help you. So you can take your knowledge and on top of that, you can put AI and create stuff. This is the best thing you can do with AI. And as AI will improve with time, so will your product. But what will happen five or 10 years when AI will become super powerful? So I've been following this theoretical physicist. Her name is Sabina Hosenlander. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. So she has made a video a while back that limitations of large language models. See, right now there is a race that the bigger the model, bigger or better will be the AI. But that's not the case. So please go watch that video if you want to get more knowledge that building bigger language model doesn't mean that you have a better AI. And that is making some people anxious and other people really interested in this technology. So you have to pick sides. Are you want to be in the anxious part who's always afraid of new stuff or you will be a category of people who are really interested in this technology and who want to improve software, software development, software development lifecycle or themselves with the use of AI. I think I'll probably pick this category rather than being a side of anxious or pessimist who just think that world is going to end soon. I really don't believe that. So let's come to the conclusion. What should you do in this AI driven job market? First of all, your coding skills are still very valuable. So please give as much as time to improve your craft. Don't get distracted by all those news. To be honest, nowadays I don't really follow the AI and those hype cycles. I'm just stick to my work, doing what I can do best after a week or so, I just see, okay, what's going on? What technology I can use? And I don't switch technology too often. So I've been using Cursor. I've been using ChatGPT for like one or two years. And that's it. That's it all I'm using because I don't want to get overwhelmed by using new tools every week, right? It will just cook my brain. I don't want to do that. I want to leave a place where I'm calm and I'm learning new things step by step. I don't want to take like 10 steps ahead. See, company wants to add those AI products into their platform, right? So they'll be looking for people who can do that. So you could become that. If you want to become an AI enthusiast, which I call, you can certainly do that. You can just learn those new AI skills and pitch that to companies. Maybe you, you can create your own product and you can pitch that to different companies that you provide those kind of services. So yeah, I think that's it from today's video. Uh, I hope you get some idea what you can build, what you can do with this new AI technology. If you have more uh, things to add, please add that in the comment section so other people can read it. I'll see you next week with a new video. Thanks a lot for watching.